What's up guys, it's Jack here, back with another video on accessories you can use for shooting video on your smartphone. I've got here the Zion Smooth Q3, and I really like shooting video on my iPhone, so I picked this up, and I've been using it for about a week now. So if you've been looking to get a gimbal like this too, then stick around and I'll show you what you can do with it, and I'll let you know if I think it's been worth it. Zion have made quite a few of these smartphone gimbals now, with ones for larger cameras too, but this is actually my first time using one of their products. There are two options to choose from when buying, a standard package which includes the stabilizer, a mini tripod, a USB-C cable and a quick start guide for £85 or $89. Or a combo package which I have here, which includes all of that plus a wrist strap, a storage bag and a ZY Cami Prime card for £105 or $109. If you're wondering, the Prime card just gives you a one year free membership to Zion Prime, which gives you access to things like templates and filters, music, and bigger upload privileges using the ZY Cami app. Honestly though, I'm not really interested in that sort of stuff. I'm more interested in the physical gimbal itself, but I will show you some of the things that you can do in the ZY Cami app without a subscription later on in the video. Here's a bit of footage that I shot with an iPhone 12 Pro Max using the Smooth Q3. After this, we'll take a closer look at the gimbal and how it works. The gimbal feels really nice and light in the hand. It's made from plastic with a spring-loaded phone grip that can hold a phone up to 9cm wide. I've been using it with an iPhone 12 Pro Max. It has a very tight hold on the phone which is great, but it does also make it a little bit fiddly getting the phone into the mount sometimes. You do need to make sure that you get the weight centred and balanced when attaching your phone, but there's no need to get it perfect as the motors will do a pretty good job by themselves. There's also a touch activated light on the grip with three levels of brightness, which can also be rotated into selfie mode. I don't really see myself using it much really, but it's nice to have. It's very small and compact, and a lot smaller than I thought it would be actually. It can be folded up using this sliding mechanism, making it nice and portable for travelling with. Measuring in at around 18cm tall, 14cm wide, and 4cm thick. When you do want to use it, it unfolds, making it around 28cm tall. Now let's take a look at the buttons and ports. There's a USB-C port on the right side for charging, along with a screw just above for tightening and locking the vertical arm in place. On the back there's a power button, and a trigger button for enabling smart follow, resetting the gimbal position, and switching between portrait and landscape orientation with either one, two or three taps. On the left side, there's a slider for digitally zooming in and out using the ZY Cami app. On the bottom, a standard quarter inch tripod mount, and a place to loop through and attach a wrist strap. And on the front, there's a joystick for manually panning or tilting your phone in the gimbal, a record start stop button, and a button to cycle through the five available modes. One press for the next mode, and a double press for the previous. 
holding it for a few seconds will turn off all of the motors so you can put it down without having it flap around and go crazy. There's also four LEDs to tell you which mode you're using and to tell you what the battery level is by pressing the power button once. And it uses Bluetooth to connect to your phone. The gimbal has three motors which all work together to help stabilize your phone, one for controlling the pan axis, one for the tilt axis, and one for the roll axis. And the motors themselves are incredibly quiet, so they're not going to affect the sound in your footage. You can use it with your phone in portrait or landscape, and it's really easy to switch between them with just a triple tap of the trigger button on the back. There's no need to physically adjust the phone or anything, it just does it for you, it's really simple. So let's now take a look at the different modes. First up, there's PF, or Pan Follow, which enables the pan motor, but locks the tilt and roll motors. L, or Lock Mode, will disable all three motors, locking the phone in place relative to itself. F, or Follow Mode, enables both the pan and tilt motors, but locks the roll motor and allows the gimbal to follow your handheld movements for panning and tilting. POV, or Point of View, allows all three motors to follow the movement of the gimbal, meaning that the phone will no longer be being kept level to the ground. A fifth press of the mode button takes you to vortex mode, which allows you to spin your phone using the joystick. Holding the trigger button on the back puts it into phone go mode, allowing the phone to pan and tilt following the movement of the stabilizer at much faster speeds while locking the roll axis. This is great for sort of doing a fast transition between shots. This gives you a nice range of options for different shooting situations, with the first three probably being the most useful and the ones that you'll get the most use out of. For example, you might want to use pan follow to get a nice pan along the horizon without worrying about the gimbal tilting up or down, or lock mode to get a nice reveal shot from behind an object. Follow mode is probably my favourite, it's great for just walking around with the gimbal whilst also giving you some control over the horizontal pan and vertical tilt movements from your wrist. In each mode you can also control your phone's pan and tilt using the joystick, but I find it engages a little too suddenly for my liking. I prefer to use it to just set my framing and composition before I start to film, and then I don't really touch it once I've started. But overall the gimbal does a pretty good job of stabilising your phone and giving you that nice, almost gliding-like feel to your footage. Occasionally I have had it jolt or almost overcompensate and slide into a move too aggressively, but this isn't something that I've had happen too often. If you have an iPhone from the last couple of years, it will already do a really great job of stabilising your handheld footage. But the gimbal will allow you to get some much trickier shots like a low angle walking shot or doing camera moves which would be a lot harder to do with the phone just in your hand. The first time you turn the gimbal on, you will need to set it up using Zion's ZYCami companion app. It is also a camera app with editing capabilities too, so you can use it to take photos or shoot video when using the gimbal, or you can shoot with the native camera app on your phone, or another one of your choice such as Filmic Pro. But the ZYCami app does communicate directly with the gimbal, so you do get a few unique features when using it. You can touch and drag across the viewfinder to select something that you want the Q3 to track and follow, and this can be done when using the gimbal handheld if you want to move around a subject for example while keeping it in frame, or when the gimbal is on a tripod so you can have the gimbal, say, follow a person moving across the scene. This also works well if you want to use the front camera in selfie mode and have the Q3 keep you in the shot. Or you can press the trigger button once to enable smart follow, which will automatically choose what it thinks is important in the scene, like a face, and track that. It follows the subject pretty well, but if it loses it or it becomes obscured, it doesn't seem to be able to relock onto it automatically, which is disappointing. There's also a panorama mode which works best on a tripod, and you can use this to take some fun photos of clones of you in the same picture if you're into that. You can get a bit creative with it. And there's a dolly zoom mode which will zoom out as you walk towards your subject, distorting the background and giving you that very Hitchcock-esque vertigo look. But I found it to be a bit gimmicky really. As it uses digital zoom, the image isn't very good quality, and I found that it has a little bit of difficulty accurately locking onto the subject. There's also support for gesture recognition to take a photo or start recording by making a V sign or holding your hand up like you're waving, but there's no way to stop recording like this, which I would have liked to have seen. And it has all the usual manual camera controls that you'd expect for setting shutter speed and ISO, as well as things like filters and templates, with some extra templates and music available 
with the Prime card as I mentioned earlier. But there is one thing that I'm really not a fan of, and that's all of the app permissions that the app asks for when you use it. Of course it's going to ask for things like access to your camera and your camera roll and your mic, but it also demands access to your location as well, and it won't even let you use the app if you disable it. I did turn off precision location in my iOS settings, but there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to turn it off altogether and still use the app. It also kept asking me for access to my local network as well. And while the app will function fine with this disabled, it would keep asking me to turn it on whenever I open the app, it was really annoying. But as I said before, you can use a different camera app if you prefer, and I probably will. I don't really see myself using a lot of these features very often, if I'm honest. I mainly use it just to set and manage the gimbal settings. So what about using the gimbal with lenses attached to your phone? Well, the gimbal supports a maximum payload of 280 grams. An iPhone 12 Pro Max weighs 226 grams, so a little under the maximum. But once you add in a case, like Moments Thin Case, which weighs around 30 grams, and a lens, like Moments Anamorphic, which weighs about 38 grams, that takes you up to 294 grams overall, which is just over the 280 gram limit. And I have tested this. The gimbal will try to balance the phone with the lens, but after a moment or two, it will just sort of beep to let you know that it's too heavy for it to balance. But to be fair, it's not designed or advertised as being usable with accessories mounted to your phone, but I thought it was worth trying out just out of curiosity. But this did get me thinking, would it work with a lighter phone? So I got my old iPhone X, put it in a moment case, and put an anamorphic lens on it, which in total comes to 246 grams, which is now just under the 280 limit. And no, it didn't work either. Um, it kept beeping to tell me that it couldn't balance. And this is because while the phone is now under the weight limit, it's no longer center balanced. The attached lens adds a lot of weight to the one side and the Q3's motors just aren't strong enough to counteract this. I did sort of get it to work with the 10 if I shifted the phone over to the one side, but this isn't really ideal as now the phone sticks out too far and it interferes with one of the gimbal's arms. So I wouldn't really recommend this gimbal if you're specifically looking to use lens attachments with your phone but I've not had any issues using the gimbal with the 12 Pro Max just in a case. Battery life is good too. Zion says that you should get a maximum of 15 hours of battery on a single charge, and I've got no complaints about battery life. With my use so far, I've not really had to charge it much. But the balanced state of the phone will affect the runtime of the Q3. It can work normally if unbalanced, but it will consume more battery power and weaken the motor strength. Leaving gesture control on will chew through your phone's battery faster too. In fact, it will give you a warning if it's been left on for more than five minutes. Now that I've used the Smooth Q3 for a few days, I have to say that I quite like it. It's very small and lightweight and portable, and it's great for just chucking in your bag and taking with you so you can get some of those nice, smooth, steady cam style shots on your phone on the go. I think that it's reasonably priced too. The combo package with the wrist strap is nice to have, and the protective case is great for keeping it protected and stopping anything from getting caught in the arms when it's in your bag. And the collapsible mini tripod makes it easy to set the gimbal down and shoot hands free. The ZY Kami app has some nice unique features like tracking support and gesture recognition, but some of them, like the dolly zoom, could do with some improvements. And I do feel that some of the permissions that it asks for are a bit invasive and unnecessary. If I want to use the app without showing my location or allowing network access, then I should be able to without being bombarded with pop-ups asking me to enable them. The gimbal offers a good range of modes for different shooting situations, and they all work pretty well. It might not be immediately obvious how each one works though for anyone that's new to using a gimbal for the first time, but if you spend a little bit of time just sort of playing around and experimenting with it, you should get a feel for how each one works. If you're wanting to shoot with lenses attached to your phone, this gimbal isn't going to be for you I'm afraid, but if you're just looking for something really portable to quickly attach your phone to to get some nice smooth cinematic style shots on the go, then I think this will work pretty well for you. If you've got any questions for me then drop a comment in the comment section below, I'll be happy to answer. If you've enjoyed the video then consider subscribing to see more tech videos, and if you found the video useful, give it a thumbs up and let me know. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.